Okay, so we got a request from a customer saying that he has uh, uh, an IPC here communicating over EtherCAT to one of our CMMT drives from Festo. And the problem that he has is that there's no IO available on the IPC. Basically, he's commanding all of the devices that he has over EtherCAT, but there's no IO available for whatever reason. What he does have is he has this conveyor line with some product coming through it, and he has a photo eye, so a photo electronic sensor here, which he wants to use to send a 24 volt signal to activate some motion here on, on an actuator, on an electric actuator. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna, we're gonna figure out how to bring this 24 volt signal uh, from this photo eye, this signal directly into the CMMT input and, and send that signal over EtherCAT to the IPC so he can then create a program to control the motion of this electric actuator down here. Okay, so let's do that, uh, let's do that now. The first thing that we have to do is we have to go into Festo Automation Suite to configure or to check out where this input is at. And in my case, I'm using the CMMT ST drive, but similar thing, it's on the CMMT AS. On the, on the digital IO, you have this connector that shows you the all available inputs. In the CMMT ST case, I have two inputs available, X1A07 and X1A08. I don't have to do anything here because we're not going to be using these conditionals within Fest Automation Suite. We're just going to pass the data over EtherCAT. I just I'm just showing this to you at this point just to just so you know where these are located at. The one thing that we do have to see is if we go to the diagnosis tab here on the top, we can see the actual I/O state here. So I/O state, and I, uh, now I can see that. Currently, I'm sending 24 volts to the X1A06, which is this pin over here. But I wanna use this X1A08 to send my photo eye signal. So it's gonna be this connector. And let me do that now. So I'm gonna grab 24 volts from here and I'm just gonna apply that. And you should see now, there you see X1A08, it's now on. I'm gonna remove the 24 and add it again. So now you see it blinking there on X1A08. All right, perfect. So that's that means that we are monitoring this with the drive, right? So the next thing that I got to do is I got to identify where am I going to get this data, right? So if I go back to parametrization on their digital I.O. Um, over here, switch over to the least view over here, the least view of the parameters. And then here, we're gonna have, if we scroll down, we're gonna see here this parameter, parameter 10151, right? And this says device interface, interface X1A status. And right now the status is one. If I add that signal again on the input eight, let me see here, we're gonna see a value of five. So let me move the cursor away. So now you see a value of five because the input eight is on. I'm gonna remove it and it's back to one. What does that number one and five mean? Well, if we go to the user manual, let me show you which user manual this is. This one, description of the software function, field bus and device profile. And if we go to page 224, or alternatively, if you search for this parameter number, 10151. Um, if I go to 1051, uh, 10151, let me just pull up the PDF again. Here we go. 10151 on page 224. It, this is a, an, a range of bits, right? So bit zero, it's the power stage enable acknowledge error. So this is the bit that I already have on because I have a jumper directly to 24 volts. You don't have to do that same thing, but that's that's the way it is right now. So this would be a value of one because this, this is the, the the lower bit, right? Remember that I'm assigning or I'm putting 24 volts to the input uh, eight. So this is the value of four because this is the bit zero, bit one, bit two. So value of four. If I was to add this signal instead of this one, then it would be a value of three because this is bit bit zero, so that's one, bit one, value of two, so one plus two, it's three. So let's try that, so you can see that I'm not lying. 
it's not, uh, here we go. Value of three. Did you see that change? Because now I'm I'm applying this this input here. But anyways, let's let's stay with that three, right? So parameterization. It's a value of three. I'm gonna remove the 24 volts from that input, and we're back to one. Okay, that's what we wanted. So now how this data is changing? How do I get that data on the PLC, right? Because how do I pass this on via Ethercat? Well, what I could do is, let me switch this over here. I could on my program where I have all of my function blocks for power, reset, and all of that, I could add this block, this function block that says read parameter, right? With read parameter, how do I parameterize this? Well, I need to specify which parameter am I going to be reading. So if I go back to automation suite here, and if you hover over this little square, it tells you which parameter number this is. And it says that on Ethercat, this parameter number is 213D, right? 213D is the index and the subindex is one, okay? 213D. All right, so if we go back to Twincat, we see here 213D, and this is in hex. So a value of 213D hex to decimal is 8501, and then we set that the subindex one. All right, so now I'm gonna read that parameter so what I can do is I can just execute this uh, enable. So I'm going to read that and you can see that this is constantly reading, right? So right now it's saying that it has a value of one. Let me apply the voltage to the input seven. And now it should say value of what? Three, right? So there it is. I'm applying the, the input, the 24 on the input, and you can see value of three. I remove it, value of one, all right? So with this, what for this application, what can be done is that now you could monitor this parameter here and you could check the status of that input. So now I could say, whenever you have a value of three, that means that you're reading something with the photo eye. So execute whatever you have to do, right? Like move the actuator. You can have a you, you can have your sequence here. Uh, and of course, if you wanted to, you know, play around with this and see how it looks like, you can also add it here under the, under the visualization read parameter, and you know, play with this value here. So that's basically, in a nutshell, how this works. Hope you liked it, and remember that this was on how to use the inputs on the CMMT and pass that data over Ethercat to a higher, uh, a higher PLC or controller. Thanks for watching.